So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with a good ender for the season. Ender for the year, 2023 album tier list. Now, halfway, well not really halfway, a couple months into the year after halfway, we did a tier list going over the best album or pretty much ranking every album that I listened to for 2023. And we will be doing an update on that where we're going over the entirety of 2023 and ranking every album. Maybe we forgot some. And we're going to be putting them on the tier list. If you guys do want more videos like this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Do. Further ado. Boy Fizz, let's hop into it. Let's go! All right, so hopping into it when it comes to these tier lists, especially on the music channel, y'all know what we got coming. Now, I do plan on doing the most anticipated albums. We're going to talk about stuff like the Cardi, all different type of stuff that's super anticipated like we did last year. So if y'all do want that, make sure to like the video. If y'all do want more of the Ox Battles, whether it be the album versus album, whether it be the artist versus artist, y'all got to put in the comments down below who y'all want to go against what, and that'll be coming. I even got to do verse, verse, verse. We only did one edition of the verse, verse, verse. So just let me know, and we can get that coming. But today we got y'all boys with the best album tier list of 2023. Not so far. We doing we getting this joint done. So yeah, let's go ahead. So we got all the albums I pretty much listened to. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Um, I think this is the D Savage album. At the point in time of me making that, it was only a couple songs I really was messing with like that. Um, come on, some some of the other songs I still go back to. I'll give it a six. I'll give it a six. It's nothing crazy to me. But yeah. Um, this summer's album, I stand on it. Trash. Utterly trash. I'm standing on it. It does not change. It's the same ranking. It is trash. I will be honest. No, this is trash. It's trash. There's no redeeming qualities. This is the one that had redeeming qualities. I don't know why he dropped that after Fallen Raven, and then drops this so soon, like, he was just coming back with something crazy, like, nah, it was still not that good, in my opinion, um, some good songs, but better than this one, for sure, but, yeah, it's not crazy, like, Fallen Raven was crazy, um, the other mix they we got, it's crazy, these two, not really it to me, at all, and I, I mess with Summers, but I ain't no crazy big Summers fan, but, yeah, that's just really what it is, um, the DJ drama tape, nothing crazy, nothing crazy at all, um, I don't even, I think be, saying it's mid is even kind of being nice. I will be honest. Nothing crazy at all. Now, we get into albums that I really did listen to a lot last year. I think this is Not or Not by Homicide Gang. This album right here, they actually did drop another album later in the year. I don't know if I put that on here. But I only really listened to that like one time. I don't even know if I finished it. So I didn't. I don't think I put that on here for that reason alone. But this is album, I got a lot of songs that was in playlists for a large percentage of the year. But if we talking about based off an album, it's not a good album. But it does have some hits on here. It does have some hits. And I'll be honest and say, and comparing to a lot of the song, uh, a lot of these albums I'm gonna go over, even from just this collective, it's gonna be it's more songs on this album that I went go back and listen to, and I can still be like it's hard. It's just like they beats are crazy though, and they don't really do much with it. So I'm gonna still have to throw that in seven. I'm gonna still have to throw that in seven at most. Um, this is the Jace album. This actually was tough. This is this was tough when it first came out. Top to bottom, it's still tough to this day. There's like a couple misses. It's actually even a solid cohesive album for like an underground art artist. I don't know if I want to give it an eight. I gave it an eight originally. I'm gonna give it an eight again. Mansion music, mansion music. Um, that's a five, bro. It's not a six. It's not a six. It's not a six, bro. I, I can't do it. It's 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 not good enough. To me. Um, the Daniel Caesar album. Arguably the best album that came out last year. I would say no. I'm going to put it in nine. Um, oh, everything got to go down. Damn near. Yeah, everything then got to go down. Yeah. This is damn near a nine. But I'm going to put it eight. The only reason why everything has to go down is because... If it's not just based off last year, if I think there's damn near a 10 that came out last year. Actually, no, 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 no. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. It's not a 10. So I don't know why I just did all that. I just did all that for no reason. Let's keep it moving. Um, if Looks Could Kill, if Looks Could Kill, this was an album that really was a big letdown in my opinion. Um, coming off of No Stylist. 
I just had pretty, 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 pretty high expectations. Um, it didn't really meet those said expectations. But with that being said, um, he ended up dropping a deluxe with I think six more songs, which was an album that already had like th- twenty eight. I think it ends up with thirty four. Really interesting decision when there was already so many hit or miss. Um, I think this was like the biggest hit or miss album of the year because I think it had some pretty good highs, some pretty high highs like Money and Sex, Safety, Right Now, um, If Looks a Kill, How You Feel. It had some pretty high highs, but like it was so many mid songs on there. Like it was so many, bro. It's tough for me to put this anything higher than six. Like Snyder not had some misses, but it's like not nearly as many misses. This maybe does have more peaks. But this doesn't have nearly as many songs, and it's just a worse. I don't even know if Alone had a good uh, artist performance. I feel like for majority of the songs, it's the same vibe every single song. Now it does add to the cohesion, but it's not. It doesn't make the the album any more entertaining or listenable when there's that many songs on the album, and they have all the same like nonchalant, I guess emo vibe guitar vibe to it i don't know how to really else explain it then we got grails by pierre i think there's a pretty much only like two misses for me it's a really good solid ep um i'll put it above it's not or not i'm actually put this down here i'm actually put this down here um golden child i actually like this album i actually like this album by um autumn I think he actually did a pretty solid album. I think this was the year Autumn actually added a good album and Summer didn't really have a good album. Um, I'm not really big on a lot of Autumn's albums, but I'll probably put this right here. I'll probably put this right here. Pretty consistent throughout the album, in my opinion. Um, It's a good album, in my opinion, especially for Underground. Um, This album, the Jack Hall, I don't even remember what this joint was called, but I'm going to be honest. There's some pretty solid albums, or not album, pretty solid songs. He tries to ch- throw out there these songs like he can rap. Um, I think people realize he could rap because that's like, bro, I don't think people remember how like the how it shifted with Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow was like, like it was like people trying to push propaganda on Jack Harlow being this great rapper where people would be like, people don't like the music that comes out nowadays and then he's having, and they was dropping that one song of his old, that one old song that he used to have, I remember that. And now people hate his hit songs. Like, they hate it. And, like, he apparently is the first rapper to have a song in four different years be a number one hit. I think 2020, 2020 2022, 2023, and 2024, he had a hit in all those years. So, yeah, I think What's Poppin', I think the new song that just came out, and the whatever it's called, the glamorous, whatever, fame, I forgot what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, but this album, I actually think it has some pretty important songs for him, but for me, I listened to a lot of these songs that one time and never went back until pretty much the end of the year when I was trying to make the, the song tier list, or not the song tier list, but you know, the little song uwu where I was trying to figure out what was the best song of the year. And I'm gonna be honest, he has some, it's some pretty good songs on there in my opinion. I actually think it was some pretty good songs on there. I would just say this album is not crazy. I'm gonna put it in six. I did like the effort, the rapping ability on there, but it's nothing crazy in my opinion. He's not like a top tier rapper or anything. I think he just should not have listened to the haters and just did his shit. Um, let's start here. I gotta keep it consistent. Um, let's start here. I believe is an eight, to be honest. If I'm being honest, I did it originally and I had him at nine. I believe. But, yeah, it's not really something I could just go back and listen to too much throughout the year. And I didn't. So that's just kind of what it is. And I'm going to put it here. Love Sick. Um, Love Sick is actually a kind of underrated album. When I first did it, I think I put it in five. I don't know what it is. Um, I think I was more mad at how bad it was compared to the songs that he had on the Metro album. Because... Um, Too Many Nights is a, bro, that is a, like, that is such a good song. It just, it's just kind of underwhelming when you have these expectations because he has these good features, but then you get on his album and it's just not, it's just not the same. 
Um, I actually, before he dropped that, what's it called album, I used to listen to the snippets, try to look up the snippets. I actually had a high hopes for him because he had the Can't Say feature, and I was like, bro, this nigga's gonna be the next guy. He drops his mixtape, and it, I'm gonna be honest, if you look at that mixtape compared to the rest, that was actually, in my opinion, his best work. But even that was a letdown for me because I had those expectations because of a feature going into the album. Um, that's kind of how I was about this album, but I think I graded this a little too hard. I think it's really more of like a six or low seven. Uh, I'm gonna put it as a seven, and I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it right here. I actually think it's kind of um, underrated a little bit. I actually think it's kind of underrated. Um, next is the Race Rimmer album. Really, only three songs I like on it. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it here though, cause I feel like it's a little bit more consistency. I just there's the, just the other songs just not for me. I can see those being for other people. Uh, Ray Shimmer is always good at having a low key hit, and they do that on that album. I'm peeing a couple times, but yeah. The Spider Man soundtrack, in my opinion, the Spider Man soundtrack, it's kind of tougher. I say this: I'm a, I'm gonna grade it one higher than it should be because it is a soundtrack, and the majority of the songs actually are like fit for a Spider Man movie. Like, they're talking about web slinging in the songs and shit like that, which is corny outside of the context of it being a soundtrack, but since it is a soundtrack, I'm going to give it an extra point for stuff like that. Um, I'll say it's a six, and I'm going to put it here. Um, the Yeet album, Afterlife. Um, I think when I first did this, I had it in nine. I don't think it's a nine. I would put it, in, I would put it at eight, and... Which one would I rather? Let's start here. I think I put Let's Start Here over Afterlife on my top 10, so I'm going to put it here. But I don't know. I, I, it's so close to me, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I even agree with that. But, yeah, I'm going to do that. 222 by Tw uh, Lil TJ. This was a come um, a come and go album for me. It came out. It, came, it just came out at a tough spot, in my opinion, where it was sandwiched in between where Thug dropped, Uzi dropped, Gunna dropped, and then, you know, Post Malone dropped. Travis Scott dropped. It just dropped at a really, really, really weird time in terms of all the good albums that was dropping. And it was like a certain time in the year where there was nothing dropping. And then everybody wanted to drop. It was kind of funny. But, yeah, Lil TJ, I think, I think Lil TJ had a solid, a solid album. I give him, I give him, I put him right here. I think it was just good. It was just good. Not, not great, not amazing, not perfect, but it was good. It was good. It was a good album. Um, Austin by Post Malone. Um, I think this is another album that just dropped at a really bad time where this one dropped the exact same week as Travis, which was just a very, very bad decision. Not only was it the most anticipated album of the year, but it ended up being arguably the best album of the year. So that was just tough. Like I said, in the top 10, I just haven't listened to this enough, but I'm going to still grade it because that's what I do. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to actually put it here. I'm going to put it at the top of seven. Um, next, um, Sprinter, the Sprinter EP or whatever it's called. This was actually a solid EP. I don't know if I should give it an extra point for it being an EP. I'm not doing that. Um, I'll put it here. Actually, I'll put it here. I'll put it there. I think since it is an EP and shorter, I think. Um, both albums are, from what I remember, both albums are pretty solid. I don't, I didn't listen to either one of these a lot throughout the year. I listened to a couple of songs off this, probably more than I listened to songs off this. But, especially if you want to talk about the totality of how many songs, so I guess you could say per song, I listened to more songs off this than I listened to off this. But I do think this was just a better album because it's harder to have a long, a, a, a real, like, so album than it is to have a good EP in my opinion. So I'll do it like that, I guess. Um, next is A Gift and a Curse. I think A Gift and a Curse is actually like the only album that's like really stood the test of time out of all these albums. I'm gonna be honest. I think all I think every album I'm gonna drink on this list kind of fell off a little bit, but I'm gonna still put it behind um Daniel Caesar album that dropped this year. Um Yeah. Simple as that. I'm gonna put that there. Next is Lil Uzi Vert, Pink Tape. Um, this album honestly gets worse with time, in my opinion. It doesn't get better. Um, the cohesiveness is not there. It is experimental. I give him that. I don't think this album will have any impact on anyone anywhere. I will be honest. But hey, if you if there is, 
We'll see. But it's been a couple months now. I don't see what the fuck this is impacting. The thing about it, uh, Uzi, I seen somebody say it best on Twitter. When you when you really support Uzi, bro, he can drop the best album ever, and it can be a closeted best album ever, even if it get hate. The thing with Uzi is he'll drop an album where it's damn near a masterpiece, and he'll come back and say that shit was ass. After you defended it forever. I did that with EA, bro. I really loved EA for what it was. It was a great, cohesive album. He ended up dropping a deluxe the week after with no faith. Man, I don't know. But when it come to Cardi, he'll stand 10 toes on that. Now, he almost did, you know what I'm saying, drop a deluxe the next year. But I ain't gonna lie. I think him standing, standing 10 toes on WLR... Made that what it is. I think people having to sit with Dialect for so long made that what it is for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I feel like if Uzi just stood on some of the stuff instead of like, because you know how right now he's already promoing his next album already. And I ain't gonna lie, I think other people do that, but like it's just the way he go about it where he'd be like, he was supposed to drop Barter 16 like two weeks later. Like it's just weird. I don't know why he's doing it like that. It's just weird. Um, I don't even know if Barty 16 not dropping anymore because of the fact that like it leaked and it just wasn't good to a lot of people. I don't know what happened with that, but hopefully Love is Rage 3 is good because the Love is Rage series is really good for a lot of people. Like Love is Rage 1.5 and 2 are amazing in my opinion. Love is Rage 1 is not as crazy as people act like in my opinion, but 2 and 1.5, fantastic. Perfect Love Tape, fantastic. You know what I'm saying? I would even say um, Lil Uzi vs. The World 2 is good. EA is amazing in my opinion. I think that's his most cohesive album. But Pink Tape just wasn't it. Definitely another hit or miss album like Destroy Lonely. And I'll even say like it's split right down the middle. Like like half of the songs are bad and half of the songs are good. It's not really any mid songs in my opinion. I think either the song is really good or it's bad. Like Uzi has been always a real hit or miss artist in my opinion. In my opinion. When, he, when Uzi is good on an album, though, he's good. When he's bad, it's, it can get bad. Um, I think this is just one of those albums where it was just bad. And I would have to probably say that this is this is mansion music area. It's not, nah, nah, nah. It's not worse than this. This may just, just come down. I'm going to just put this here. I'm going to put it here. It's like a five. I, I really don't I really don't like that album. I really don't. Um, If Destroy Lonely here, actually, yeah, I'll put it there. It's better than Destroy Lonely album. I'll say that. Yeah, it's better than Destroy Lonely. Anything else, I can't do it. Um, so, Fago. I actually messed with this album when it came out, when it, but it's not really standing the test of time for me. I'll put this, like, here. I'll put this, like, here. To be honest, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't do that. The Idol. Now, this is a weird thing because this is kind of an album because they have multiple little EPs of this, and it kind of completes into an album. It's actually a, not a bad album, but yeah, I'm throwing this, I'm throwing this like here. Yeah. Business is business. Yeah, this is another like letdown of an album. I don't know what people are listening to when they saying this is a good album. I really don't. Like, I'm, I'm actually like confused when I hear people say that. Like, this is actually like such a bad album in my opinion. Like the Metro version, I don't know how Metro did it, but it was actually better. If you want to say the Metro, this is how I do it. If it's the Thug version, it's like a five. The Metro version, it's probably, it probably is like a tier better. It'll probably be like right here. It'll probably be like right there. Um, I don't really know. We're just going to rank the best version. I'm going to go there. A lot of misses on that album for me. A lot. A lot. There are hits. It's Thug. But, yeah. Hopefully, they don't drop another album until Thug is out of jail because I don't know what the fuck that shit was. That was not good. Um, yeah. Um... Unless they do, like, some old, old leaks. Like, some old, old leaks. Then they can go crazy. But, like, put Slime Season 1 on streaming services, thug. Since you in jail. Put Slime Season 2 on streaming services, thug. That's some shit you could do. To be real. But, yeah. Uh, Utopia. That was the best album of the year. 10. Um, that one is kind of what makes it kind of tough to rank the rest. Because it's such a, a, on a, on a higher scale in terms of, like, um, everything. I, I think this is arguably Travis' best album, personally. I do think it's not as good as when I first listened to it, like the first, like, couple, like, first, not couple, but first month. But I still think it's really, really high. I think it's the best album that came out this year, for sure. Um, the Trippy Red album, um, 
the more the longer this album was out, the worse it was. Um, How You Alive is arguably one of his best songs ever, though. I'll give him that. But besides that, it's a couple other solid songs. I won't lie. Trippy is just too talented, but he just puts zero effort. It's just kind of sad. I'll put this here after what I put it earlier. I'll put it here. Um, now this V1, V1, um, yeah, V1 is pretty, pretty fantastic. I probably have to put V1. Now I'm looking at this top 10. I want to put V1 a nine. It was five for seven. I don't know if I can put it a nine though. A nine is kind of crazy. But I do want to put it at 9. I'm going to put it at 8. I'm going to put it at 8. Hard Rock. Now this, in my opinion, deserves a 9. This is a, like this is the best underground album that came out this year. No Stylus won it last year for me. This is easily the best underground album that came out this year. Easily. It's so good. It's literally so good. Now, easily is capped because I forgot. There's another album that's going to be on this list that you could argue is better. But um, I think I would go with this album. Hard rock, um, cohesiveness, hits. He got everything on here. Versatility. He got everything on here. Ain't gonna lie. Um, so yeah. Fat D. Um Damn, this feels weird to put Fat D as a nine though. I don't know if I can do that. Cause this is arguably one of Drake's worst albums. But if you compare it to the rest, if I was ranking this against Drake albums, that's a whole different scale. That'd probably be like a six or a seven. But if you compare it to these albums, that just kind of shows you how music is kind of falling off. But I would have to say it's a nine for the grand scheme of these this year. For the grand scheme of these this year, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, a great chaos. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put a great chaos. I'm gonna put it here. Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. Great chaos is fantastic. Only reason Fat D is a nine, man. I didn't gotta bring this shit down. I don't know if I can put that shit a nine. That's just, I don't know, bro. That's a little. That's even for me as a big Drake fan. I don't know if I can do that. All right, now scaring the holes. Now I will be real with y'all. I'm not even gonna be. I'm not even gonna be politically correct on this one. Um, like I said in the top ten, this is when I really realized music is like, object. Whatever, whichever one is right, subjective or objective, it is that like opinions, like bro. Like, everybody got their own taste. This album, in my opinion, is the epitome of different trying to be different. Like, literally trying your hardest to be different. I don't know, but I don't, bro, I listened to this album when it first came out because it was getting geeked on, gassed. Like, when the, like, for the hype for it on Twitter, like, I don't even understand how, like, Twitter hype because, bro, Twitter will act like something is the worst album ever. They don't listen, they're not finna listen to it. The shit will end up with crazy streams. Then they'll do something like this where they'll give it a lot of hype and you see it like nonstop for that whole week. And this shit will sell no, like, sell, like nobody's listening to it. It makes no sense. I really don't understand it. It's the most confusing thing. But when it comes to this album, even in the YouTube comments, I be seeing people go crazy for it. So when I did my last tier list, I said this in the top 10. When I did my last tier list, I listened to it again. I'm going to just say I didn't, it just wasn't it for me. It wasn't it for me. I really think it was like, bro, it's literally like, it's literally like, the only thing I can give it is that it's definitely experimental. Like, if you're one of those people that be like, whole lot of red isn't experimental, I don't really know how that's possible. Um, Let me think. Who's somebody that did something that was kind of, I guess X. If you're a person that think X isn't experimental or Cardi, whole lot of red isn't experimental, this is what you think is experimental. This is this is literally the only thing. Like you have to go this far to be experimental. This is experimental. This is no no cap. There's this is the most. This is different. This is different for sure. For surely different. Um, I just didn't like it personally. Um, Ben one by R Rilo. I think it's solid. I will put. I'll put this right here with um, Hamasad. Tech, I would put Tech. This one, I think this one is a seven. I'll put this at the top of seven. It's either top of seven or low eight. It's one of those. I'm going to put it there. 
Um, St. Michael V2. V C V2 is good, but it's not nowhere near as good as D1. Um, there are some really, really good songs, but it's way more misses. It's like at least four, three or four misses, and it's an EP. So the first one was like a seven-song EP. The second one is like, if this first one has seven, this one has 11. So four, three misses. That's actually still a solid ratio. I ain't gonna lie. I'll give it a seven. I think I really was let down. Uh, the, it's the thing that it's not, it's not just that it's seven, though. The five out of seven that was, bro, those are fantastic songs. These are just maybe maybe four or like maybe six or five good songs and one fantastic. That psych psychotic lunatic song is fantastic. I give them that. But the rest are just good to like, like, like some may, one may even be amazing besides, but you know what I'm saying. It's not like on the same level as those other five out of seven, if that makes sense. But I'll put this here. I'll put it there. It's just it is a pretty solid ratio. I ain't gonna lie. Flex Music, Osama Sun. I didn't put the other one on here for whatever reason, but um, I ain't gonna lie. People be like, you listen to Osama Sun? You listen to Osama Sun? I ain't gonna lie. This nigga not that good. His beats are crazy. Um, but, I mean, he kind of, like, he's another artist that's, like, finding his sound, I guess you could say. I mean, Uzi trying to find his sound is weird to me in some ways. Like, Uzi already has a sound. It's solidified. And when he tries new things, he just uses his same sound on that new thing. It's, like, really weird. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. I really don't know how to explain it. Like, Uzi has shown, he's, he's like, like, bro, what he did on, like, the rock songs he did on here, like, even the one song he did was not even that bad. But he's done so much better of a song like that that's, like, been unreleased or a leak that we've heard. Or even did a song for a soundtrack that was far better. Like, it was just far better. That was a rock song. So, like, even some of the songs that he was trying to be doing different shit, it was just, it just wasn't good for Uzi in my opinion. But Flex Music, this is just... Not that crazy in my opinion. I think there's like, ah, uh, I don't even know how many songs on here, but it's like four or five solid songs, but two really, really good songs I listen to, like playlists. You know what I'm saying? Playlists. So I'll go. I'll go like here. Put it six. Um, this, this is tough to rank because I, when you compare it to Fat D, Fat D has much, much, much more replay factor. This has no skips. This has no skips. Every song on it is really, 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 really good rapping. It's just, I'm never going back to listen to it like that. I go back and listen to some of the songs, like Evil Ways, The Wick, Wick Man song, and You Broke My Heart. When, like, for the first week I was listening to that nonstop. That shit, I can't listen to that shit no more. I ain't gonna lie. I just can't. Story by my brother. I actually like some of the... I think some of the songs on there are really good Drake rapping. You know what I'm saying? It's just another thing like Jack Harlow. He... I mean, bro, you shouldn't have just... Li you should have just kept being Drake, bro. You... you uh, people say, J give us a rap album forever. Now you did it. You know what I'm saying? You could have done a much better rap album, by the way. You could have did a much better full-blown rap album. And I think you could have did it way more versatile than this. Just boom back rap the whole time. Like, that was kind of corny in my opinion out of Drake. In my opinion. Because Drake, what makes Drake so special, in my opinion, is the fact that he can rap in so many ways. Like, if he does an actual full-blown rap album, I won't sing rap Drake. I want, um, like, hit maker rap Drake. Like, when I'm saying hit maker rap Drake, I'm not saying, like, girls want girls. I'm saying, like, 0 to 100 rap Drake, where he's on a good beat, but he's also rapping. Like, an 808 beat, and he's also rapping. And some songs mixed in there. Like a boom bap rap Drake where it's going to be like a do not disturb or a time and place. I feel like these songs are good, but they're not like peak rap Drake songs. But again, like I was saying with Fat D, bro. Fat D, if we're basing it compared to other Drake albums, it would be low. But compared to these, this is damn near the best album that came out this year. It's either, it's between this and Daniel Caesar. I'm going to put this behind the Daniel Caesar because it's a full-blown album. I think it's harder to make a full-blown album than like a quick EP that Drake made where he probably didn't put no time in any into any of these songs. He just dropped this because he wanted to stop niggas from bitching. But he should have just stopped listening to niggas. He should have just 
put his head on straight. I don't know. Um, Pink Friday, um, it's not that good to me. I'll put it right there with Uzi, to be honest. Uzi and Destroy Lonely. I wasn't really hyped for it, but it was better than I expected. I ain't gonna lie in some ways. The song with J. Cole is fantastic, though. I'll give her that. That's a that's a great song. Um, Offset, not nowhere good as the, uh, his last album, in my opinion, but I think this is still a solid little, little tape. I'll put it right here with Lil TJ. And that's my tier list for the albums of 2023. Y'all do want more videos like this, just like the video. I know people are going to have a lot to disagree with. What do you guys think was the worst album that came out last year? What do you guys think is the best album that came out last year? Um, I know people are going to be like, Scaring the Holes, Utopia, the D Daniel Caesar album. It's going to be one of those. But yeah, just put in the comments down below what you guys think is the best one. What do you guys think I tweaked on the most? What you what was you guys' least favorite ranking? What was you guys' favorite ranking that I had? <laughs> but yeah, just like the video, subscribe if you're new. Y'all want more? Put in the comments down below what y'all want to see next. Whether it be an Ox Battle, whether it be the most anticipated albums, you guys can put down in the comments down below what you guys think is the most anticipated album for this year. I think the most anticipated album for this year, in my opinion, has to be Cardi Album. If it's not Cardi Album, it's got to be Weekend Album. If it's not Weekend Album, it's got to be J. Cole Album. It's got to be one of those. Um, some other guys, people may be more interested in, but those are probably the ones for me. But yeah, that's going to be it. Like the video, subscribe. Further ado, your boy Fitz, I'm out of the bit, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!